Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, what's it like to make a video at Tolarian Community College? Making videos for Tolarian Community College is actually a lot of work. There is a lengthy process of pre-writing, testing, scripting, filming, and editing for the professor. So what's it like behind the scenes? The first step is pre-writing. Pre-writing usually means to take an initial look at items and jot down any first impressions. More than anything, this is just me beginning the note-taking process, which of course is going to be continued well into product testing, but it's where I begin, and so let's begin there. So unless this goes up in a weird order somehow, I guess here's a bit of a sneak preview. These are some items that I've received samples of or purchased. I believe I purchased one and received samples of two. And i am not even begun testing them. I'm just literally in the preliminary notes stage. And what they are are these three ring binders that everyone actually requests me to review. This one's still, this is from Ultimate Guard. It's still in its plastic. I guess we can take it out in a moment. I'm not a big fan of the three ring binders because I've always felt, well, just go to an office supply store. You don't need to buy some cheap binder at your local game store for twice as much as a heavy duty professional office depot or office max binder or whatever. But I guess I can see right here. And again, this is the sort of thing I'll jot down in my notes as preliminary impressions. Hmm is that the uh, ultimate guard, and this is not a review. Warning, this is literally me turning on the camera, talking about pre-writing. Uh, but the ultimate guard here uh, is very nice in terms of the interior and exterior. The extern ex exterior, <laughs> I take many takes usually. Uh, the exterior has that nice Xeno skin, which I'm a fan of, non-slip grip surface. The interior, I'll have to check with them on the material. Uh, I guess it's a kind of suede lining or felt lining. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not good at identifying materials just by running my fingers along them. I want to check. Uh, and so, you know, what am I going to do with this? I'm going to test it for a lot of weeks. I'm going to put my collection in here and I'm going to take my collection out and I'm going to take it down to the game store for trades and use it as my trade folder for a couple weeks and on and on. And I want to see if this breaks or if this works really well or what my overall feel for it will be. Uh, this is really neat. This is from REP Gaming. Uh, this is manufactured by them here in the United States, I believe through a, a hand press. I'll have to confirm them. Again, this is not a review of these items. And so this is nice. It's actually, oh wow, it's embossed on the front. Got a nice little, I think that's their logo or design. And so again, this is, it looks like it's a leather or pleather-like substance, uh, vinyl interior. Looks kind of heavy duty, but we'll find out with testing. Uh, here we have Ultra Pro, and it's broken. This is brand new. So I was down at my local game store. Probably can't see this on camera. I'll get a little closer. This was, I was actually at my local game store, and they got a shipment in. And so naturally, I went over sniffing around, saying anything new in the shipment, and they pulled this out, and it was already uh, broken. Shipped to my game store, my local game store. Brand new. Uh, it's all curved and warped and my initial impressions are cheap. So I'm just setting up some shots for the Commander 2015 review, and yes, I use a shelf in my kitchen if I want to get the blue background, because I have a blue kitchen, and these came brand new, out of the box, at my local game store. Got home, opened it up, this is sealed from Wizards to my local game store, and it's torn. Look at that. Now, I mean, the cards are fine, but that stinks, right? And more than one like that. Next up, I need to test those products. Testing also varies, but usually I try to put in two to three weeks minimum of play testing. Some items don't quite take as long, but a lot of times items will require more time. So one of the most important things, of course, in product testing is testing the product. It's right there in the title. 
I really try and just use products as though they were my own for a reasonable amount of time as the main part of my testing. So in this case, we're doing binders. Here's the new Star City Games one that I'm gonna open up in just a moment. And after, of course, logging in my preliminary notes, I'm gonna go through this pile of uh, cards. These are some decks that I'm in the process of getting all the pieces for. And instead of just keeping them all in a deck box until I get the deck complete, I'm going to put them in the binder and so that way I'll be able to see how well it holds the cards. Some of them are sleeved, some of them are in perfect fit, some of them are double sleeved. I can take them in, take them out as I rearrange them, as I get new cards from trades to build the deck. And so I get a, a pretty fair test over several weeks of the product. Uh, sometimes it only needs a week before it is evident whether or not it is a, a, a disaster or a work of excellence. But I'd say that usually I like to do at least two to three weeks of testing on each product. And again, that is gonna vary. Uh, and so I usually just carry everything around in my backpack. Uh, Again, the idea is to use it as though it were the only binder that I had and I was using it like I use a binder. So in here from weeks back, I have the new Ultra Pro 4 column. Uh, this is not like the 4-Up. You've already seen the review video if I timed this correctly. And this actually I've been using for, I have it written down in my notes, but uh, I've been using it for over a week, not quite three, and already the cover has got all these rotten scuff marks on it just from being taken in and out of my backpack uh, down at the card store and such. Uh, so that's definitely a negative, especially when it's up against uh, the Ultimate Guard, really nice Xeno skin covers. And I can see right away on the Star City Games without even opening this, that this looks like I'm gonna find it to be a really nice leather cover. Uh, I'm gonna open that up in just a minute and start sleeving these cards. But first, I need to make a note that we've got a problem with the Ultra Pro cover. Writing. Once I feel I have a good grasp of each item and sufficient notes, it's time to translate that into a script. This can take anywhere from one to two hours, although if I am writing a more technical script, such as my guide to sideboarding or introduction to cube, it can take a lot longer than that. All right, before we continue on, how about a tour of the Tellarian Community College professor's office? All right, ready for a tour of the Tellarian Community College professor's office to see what all of that looks like. Oh boy, is it fascinating. And by the way, my audio is recorded, of course, on an external microphone. So with me moving around, the audio levels may change. Apologies. That's how it is. All right, here, let's take a look at the majesty that is Tellarian Community College. So this should be a couch, but basically it's a kind of storage container for a whole bunch of crap that should be stored away properly, but I don't have any drawers for it, so it ends up on the couch. Uh, like a hat that doesn't fit right. Why do I have that? Uh, and it's a real mess, and I plan on cleaning it up. And over here, oh wow, boy. This is the air conditioner. I installed it myself. Uh, wow, where to start? I added on this, and uh, that's pretty much it. It's a very small office. Oh, the creepy foam. My office is a cement room in my basement. 
And even though I painted the crappy drywall that was put up by people other than me before I moved in, a lovely shade of puke brown, uh, it echoed even with this nice high quality microphone. So I went out and I bought these foam mats, which are like you put them on beds to make them softer. They were surprisingly hard to find. And I took a staple gun and I stapled them all over. And now my basement, aside from the part that I film myself sitting at my desk in, looks like a torture chamber. And our fuse box for the whole house is right over there. So one time we had someone come in and they needed to access the fuse box and they walked in my basement. They, 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 I, had to t I had to tell them that I wasn't gonna murder them because it looks like I was, or kidnap them, not murder. You don't have a torture chamber if you're gonna murder someone. That's what kidnapping's for. That's not secured in any meaningful way. I literally just pushed it up there. The slightest tap and it'll come falling down. Filming is a pain in the tuchus because my office is small, messy, and a creepy cement basement. Just setting up a shot usually means moving half the contents of the room from one side to another. <laughs> I also have absolutely no training whatsoever in film, photography, or even basic camera operation. Every week I am learning something new, but this is usually after screwing up in the first place. Every scene needs a lot of takes, that way I can choose the best one. Even then, I am usually not happy with the end result. The arch enemy can attack multiple players at the same time. As attacks are declared for the arch, The arch enemy can attack multiple opponents as once. When it's the archer, the arch enemy can attack multiple opponents as once. When it's the arch enemy's turn for attack, they declare which player each creature is attacking, and then all attacks happen at the same time. Filming can take anywhere between one to two hours, again with variants leaning more on the high end of that. I usually listen to a magic podcast or three while I film. I use a lot of narration, like what you are listening to here. That requires me to read from my script, which sounds easy, but then I need to edit out every breath, every gasp, every stumble. What kind of magic deck do you use in Arch Enemy? Each Arch Enemy game pack comes with 20 scheme cards and a 60 card deck that has been pre-constructed to interact with these particular schemes. However, you don't need to use this pre-constructed deck, and in fact a lot of the fun of Arch Enemy is playing with your friends in your preferred format. Be that standard, modern, commander, or just kitchen table magic. Which brings me to editing. This takes a lot of time as well. Sometimes it feels really monotonous, and other times it's a relief that I'm not filming myself as I nervously flop sweat my way through a video. For audio without video, as you see here, I need to cut out every gap, every breath, then I will later attach it to photography or video of the products, and then add visual effects and text, transitions, etc. I use Final Cut Pro. I've not had any training whatsoever other than spending hours googling things like, how do I make a slideshow on Final Cut Pro? And, Final Cut Pro X keeps crashing. How hire a person to beat programmers with a stick?
Editing is done, it looks like this. Editing is the longest part and usually takes at least three hours, but has gone as long as five hours for longer, more complex videos. I've also had many horrible situations where my equipment melts down, won't work, and it takes me hours to figure out what the heck is happening and how to fix it. So not counting testing, which is always going on, the process of making a video is going to take anywhere between six and 10 hours. Of course, some videos take longer and some videos thankfully are a lot quicker. So at three videos per week and teaching community college two days out of the week, I pretty much am constantly working. One of the things I hear a lot is, you folks over at Tolarian Community College, or you guys, or even the staff at, when talking about my channel, and none of this is accurate. It's just me here, writing, filming, and editing videos. I see so many YouTube shows now with a giant budget and production team, craft services, and studio sets. I think people begin to think that everyone has that, but I don't, and I can't imagine I ever will. Heck, I would have had to stop making episodes regularly if it wasn't for people donating to me on Patreon, which allowed me to quit one of my two part-time jobs and replace it with making these videos. The income, after all the taxes and fees and taxes, ended up being about the exact same as the job I quit. But the joy and satisfaction I get from my work is enormously better working here for all of you. So yeah, I am thankful this season for this community. And I hope very much these videos have been and will continue to be helpful for you.